it's always a challenge to be the first uh, uh, speaker of uh, a meeting like that, especially when you are the only geneticist. And most of you uh, uh, believe that uh, epidemic, the epidemic of obesity is due to the environment, and uh, changing the environment uh, is the best way to prevent uh, uh, obesity. However, I will try to make you convinced that the individual characteristics uh, that are in part dictated by the personal genome can play a role in the development of obesity, but and also in the in the treatment or prevention of uh, of obesity. So, believe me or not, but uh, <clears throat> about many analyses, especially on twins, uh, like this one in twins uh, in in children, showed that the irritability of uh, obesity or uh, characterized by, by BMI or waste is about 75%. So if the epidemic of obesity can be attributable, attributed so to uh, change in the environment, the individual differences in weight can be attributed to the genetic difference between these in individuals. <clears throat> However, it's interesting to see that uh, if you analyze twins that, that are twins in, uh, in Finland, and you divide uh, the twins in three groups with a low physical activity, medium physical activity, or high physical activity. For the twins who don't have any physical activity, the irritability of the fat mass is about 90%. However, it's, only, it's less than 20% for those uh, with uh, a high physical activity, which means that physical activity can prevent the deleterious effect uh, of uh, the, the gene load or on the contrary, you can say that low physical activity uh, exacerbates uh, the deleterious uh, effect of uh, this, uh, this mutation. I will give you an example of that. Uh, FTO is a gene that uh, increases about 50% the risk uh, of physical activity. We worked uh, in uh, uh, teenagers from Finland, and what you see here is there is no effect of uh, the genotype of FTO for the teens who have, uh, are active. Uh, on the contrary, for the inactive uh, teens, uh, the, the, the genotype in FTO, the mutation FTO, is associated uh, with uh, an increase of uh, the BMI. Again, there is a protection of uh, these people carrying uh, the wrong f genotype if they have uh, uh, some kind of uh, physical uh, activity. Now, the geneticists uh, fail to find a strong influence uh, of uh, uh, our irritability in physical activity. So in other words, physical activity is not dictated by our, our gene, which may be a surprise. On the contrary, we found a very strong influence of the genes in appetite, especially in children, with a irritability between 60 and 80%, depending on the kind of questionnaire you use for this uh, analysis. There is a, a direct evidence uh, of the roles of gene in appetite. About 5% of the most severe obesity cases, especially in children, are believed to be monogenic. And uh, all these children suffer uh, from a mutation in the leptin melanocortin pathway, uh, which uh, uh, modulate appetite. And their phenotype is hyperphagia uh, and excessive hunger. Most of these children have mutation in an effector of the system, the melanocortin-4 receptor, MC4 uh, receptor. And um, however, we have to understand that the effect uh, of the environment, even for this monogenic form of obesity, is important. We analyzed three generation uh, uh, families with mutation in MC4 receptor. The penetrance of uh, obesity in these children, which means uh, what is the proportion of children developing obesity when they carry a mutation is about 80% today. Uh, however, uh, for their parents and grandparents, it was uh, about 60 to 40 percent. And when we ask uh, the, to the grandparents and parents their weight when they were 20, only 10 percent were, were obese at that time, which means that the environment has changed uh, uh, in the last uh, uh, 50 years, and probably education, the way uh, children have access to food, have changed dramatically. And uh, if you have a mutation now, the effects are worse than if uh, uh, you, you had the mutation 50 years ago. We also analyzed the population in Pakistan from consanguineous families, and we found mutation in the leptin gene and mutation MT4 receptor. Families are consanguineous, which means that the children 
uh, are homozygote for the mutation MC4 receptor, the same mutation we found in France, but they don't have one copy of the mutated gene, they have two copies of the mutated gene, and they are very obese. The surprise that their parents who are by definition heterozygote are not uh, uh, obese at all. They are lean now in 2012, which means that the difference in the culture between rural Pakistan near, near Lahore and, uh, and north of France uh, means a lot in the expression of uh, the mutation MC4 receptor. What is the effect uh, of, uh, 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 of a genetic defect on obesity by bariatric surgery? Uh, last year, uh, about 300,000 Americans uh, had bariatric surgery, 31,000 in France. So if you have a mutation, what does it change? It changed a lot. We found, for instance, uh, about 1% of the very obese people have a deletion on the chromosome 16P. And uh, you see some example of, uh, of people who receive gastric bending, absolutely no effect, or uh, a bypass, and, uh, and bypass some effect, but it's less good which means that uh, given the, the cost for the society and the implication for the patient on bariatric surgery, I strongly believe now that genetic testing will be very useful. Uh, for instance, uh, uh, you shouldn't uh, treat this patient with gastric uh, banding, and you have to be very, very careful when you follow this kind of patient, even if uh, you have the, the derivation or other bypass. So what is the nature of the gene we are looking for? I think this, uh, this, what we are looking for are environmental sensitivity genetic variant that will make some individuals more vulnerable to the obes 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 or, or, sorry, obesogenic uh, uh, environment, which means that uh, uh, living uh, in the modern environment, uh, they will develop more than others uh, obesity and the complication of obesity. So that slide shows the different kinds of mutation that uh, have been found uh, for uh, obesity and the effect on the environment. On the top, you have the most, deleter most deleterious mutation. I showed you that even for them, uh, the environment is quite important. Uh, on the bottom, you have the mutation we have found with uh, what we call with genome-wide association study and uh, with the arrays. The odds ratio is between 1.1 to 1.5 uh, for FTO. It's quite difficult. Uh, because of their uh, mild effect to, to look for the interaction with, with the environment. However, uh, we know that most of the genes are expressed uh, in the brain and they are involved directly in the uh, control of the appetite or indirectly uh, through the development of the brain or development of neurons. So, which means that the genetics have shown that most of the, f of the genetic factor from so far have something to do uh, with the development of the brain and uh, the control of appetite. Curiously, uh, we didn't find anything that really have a, a role in uh, metabolism. Now, what uh, about uh, what we call the missing irritability? Because every, all the things I described so far only explain about 10% uh, or 20% irritability. Now, we are looking for rare variants uh, which are specific to yourself, to your family, and we try to see how they react to the environment. And we recently found a mutation in the a lipid sensor, which is GPR120, which sends uh, omega-3 long-chain fatty acid. And uh, when you have a mutation, it's in human, but also in, in, the, in the mice, and you have a healthy diet, nothing happened to you. But uh, if uh, you have high fat diet, then you develop obesity. And not only obesity, but you also develop uh, unhealthy obesity. And I think that's quite interesting for the future because what the, genet the geneticist uh, found also with the physiologist is uh, this idea of uh, a favorable fat phenotype, so healthy uh, obesity, really exists. Uh, and, uh, and for instance, uh, GPR120 is one of these drivers of the move from healthy obesity to unhealthy obesity with a fatty, uh, a fatty liver, uh, metabolic syndrome, and the development of uh, type 2 diabetes and cardiovascular disease. So that's the situation today in the, in the genetics uh, uh, of, uh, of obesity. Uh, we found in the last 15 years a role of some gene in the regulation of appetite, and it's still the case that they, when they mutated, uh, they increase appetite. We now have uh, some stronger um, um, evidence 
that some gene involved in the development of the brain and the function of the neurons are also involved uh, in uh, um, obesity. And for some of these regions, there is a genomic balance. If you have a deletion of some region, you are extremely obese. If you have uh, a duplication, an excess of DNA, you can be extremely lean. And now, uh, I'm sorry, something is not written uh, uh, in, is, is re nicely, but uh, we have some nutrient uh, sensing and partitioning gene, like a GPR120 for the omega-3, and uh, what is written uh, on the bottom, the left, is the starch. We have some gene involved in starch digestion that also uh, are associated with the development of obesity. And I think the new generation of gene for obesity are directly in contact with the food, with the different nutrient. And uh, that means that the people who have this mutation are extremely sensi sensitive uh, uh, to the uh, effect of the change in, uh, in diet. So obesity is our legacy, but as well as global warming is a legacy for our children. We have created uh, uh, the obesogenic environment. I, I just finished that. Genetic variation make uh, some of us more vulnerable to obesity, <coughs> or on the contrary, protect us. Identifying these genetic factors and elucidating the interaction with the environment should be beneficial, even for the prevention of, uh, of obesity. And uh, really to finish, <coughs> there are a lot of factors that associate uh, with uh, obesity. And uh, I mentioned the role of nutrition or gene interacting with nutrition. We are working now on some uh, pollen, uh, pollution, different kind of, of pollen uh, that, as, as you know, increase also the risk of obesity. And the way these uh, chemicals are processed and, uh, and metabolized by our body is genetically driven, and we are now working on that because we believe that there's another generation of, uh, of genes that can be quite important for the development and the prevention of obesity. Thank you.